Hi everyone, how's it going? This is about finding the angle between a vector and the coordinate axes. So the coordinate axes means the x, y and z axes. Okay. So this is the best diagram I could find. So what it's about is trying to find the angle between a given vector here and each of the x, y and z axes. The diagram is not bad, except they call the angles alpha, beta and gamma, whereas in your textbook they call them theta x, theta y, theta z. Okay, so alpha, beta, gamma, that's an alphabetical order, the Greek alphabetical order there, okay. Um, right, what I've done is I've taken this bit here, the angle between the given vector and the y-axis, and I've drawn the right angle triangle here, because visually from this 3D diagram, it's easier to see what's going on, okay. Um, in a way, you have to ignore these lines here. They're not really that helpful. They're not adding to it, okay, but it would have taken me about an hour to edit that, so I didn't bother. Okay. Um, what we're after is the angle between this given vector and the y-axis. So in all cases, you have to work out what the modulus of the vector u is. That's where you use Pythagoras' theorem in 3D, of course. So when you're given 3D coordinates, um, just work out what the length of that vector is there, first of all, because you're going to need it. Okay. Now, what you've got to do is imagine this. Okay. So here's the top point of the vector that I'm pointing to here. If you drop a perpendicular down to the y-axis, I'm going to stop it there. Okay. Now, the reason I've dropped a perpendicular is to get a right-angled triangle. And this is the right-angled triangle we've got. Okay. I'm hoping that one's an easy one to visualize. And I've drawn it over here. Okay. So this right-angled triangle is the one I've just pointed out. So this u here, you can work out what that is, as I said, using Pythagoras' theorem. That y indicates the y coordinates. Okay, that's effectively what these lines here are for. They tell you what effectively the x coordinate, y coordinate, and z coordinate are. But that's the y coordinate. So in this right angle triangle, you want to work out this angle marked beta or theta y in your textbook, and you just use cosine beta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine beta equals y over the modulus of u. And that's it. Now, for the other angles precisely the same. The best way of looking at this is as follows. With 3D coordinates, it does not matter where you label the X, Y and Z axis. The reason? Because they're all at 90 degrees to each other. So if you wanted to, you could put the Z axis down here or the Z axis down here. So the best way of understanding what happens to find the angle for alpha and gamma is just to swap the axes around. So for the next one, between the um, vector and the x-axis, I'm going to call this here the x-axis. And we've got a very similar triangle, except I'll call it alpha and the x. And then you've got this result here, cos alpha equals x over um, modulus of u. And then for when I want to do it between the z-axis, I'm going to call this the z-axis. And then in this triangle, I've got z here and I've got gamma. Okay, And I've got this result here. I'm hoping that uh, makes sense for you. Otherwise, trying to explain this angle alpha here is difficult without um, adjusting the orientation of the diagram. I'm hoping that makes sense for you. I've just got a short example to show you leading on from that. So here's a vector OP, the coordinates of 2, 3, 5 for point P. So the vector OP would be 2i plus 3j plus 5k. All right. So first of all, work out the magnitude. So notice OP means the distance OP, if it's not written in vector form. So distance OP, I'm hoping you're happy with that. 2 squared, 3 squared, 5 squared, root 38. And then for the angle between the vector and the x-axis, that's alpha. Cos alpha equals 2 over root 38. And then cos beta equals 3 over root 38 for the y-axis. And cos gamma equals 5 over root 38 for the z-axis. I'm hoping that made sense to all of you. 